Good morning, I'm Dr. Anne Sylvestre. I am just outside of Montreal now on the banks of the beautiful St. Lawrence River and I want to talk to you about the femoral head ostectomy versus the total hip replacement. I'm often asked, should I be sending my patient for an FHO or should we be doing a, recommending a total hip replacement in this patient? You know, the question is one of case selection. So the FHO tends to have a good outcome, a very good prognosis in patients, smaller dogs, medium to smaller patients. So 60 pounds, I'm going to say, and smaller with a lot of post-operative rehabilitation. So we need to make sure that they do get the appropriate post-op care. A larger dog can do well also, but we tend to have a bit of a harder time sometimes getting there. Also, very chronic cases. So you get a 60 pounder that has really bad hip dysplasia and he's now eight years old and the OA is, is debilitating. Uh, that would be uh, a better patient for a total hip. Um, I've done FHOs in those patients. And the post-op is just, tends to be, be very lengthy. It can take longer to get them to the stage, the way that we anticipate they can move, they can be doing well. And of course, the goal is always pain-free, limp-free, drug-free uh, for uh, extended periods of time and not always coming back with complications, right? So that's our goal. If I have a larger patient, one that has a chronic problem, like I just described, OA, and I've got a you know, 90 pound golden retriever, um, a, a total hip replacement to me would be a better option for that patient. They're gonna get to where we want them to be much faster It'll be, uh, you won't need as much post-operative rehabilitation and that dedicated owner. The thing that happens um, if, you know, the post-op management takes a long time and the dog takes a long time to come around, you know, the clients, they get a little discouraged and then they don't necessarily do what they need to do because they don't see the improvements in their patients. And so it takes a lot of uh, encouragement and it takes the right owner to be able to do that, to keep the patient going. And, and that tends to be the issue with, you know, the long post-op rehabilitation management cases. So um, larger dogs, chronic problems, FHO, smaller patients, more acute issues like uh, a luxated hip that uh, won't stay reduced, a fracture, uh, leg calf perthes, that kind of thing. Uh, I find those patients do great with an FHO. Not every board cert certified surgeon will do a total hip replacement. So I don't do total hips. I have assisted during my residency on many of them. I have never taken the course. I never had an interest in developing the skill to do this procedure. So if you want to send a patient for a total hip replacement, you need to find the surgeon that's gonna be able to do that for you. Um, so you contact your local board certified surgeon and ask the question, do you do total hip replacements? And if the answer is yes, I do them, ask them for, you know, maybe references. Can you speak to the last five pet owners who've had a total hip replacement? just so that you could get references before you start sending your client for this kind of surgery. You know, if the last five surgery were done over a 10 year span, maybe we're not doing that many total hips, right? So it needs to, it's a skill that you need to keep working at. You at least need to do a lot of them to really get the, the technique. The technique has a lot of precisions in it. So to really get good at it. Uh, my surgical partner uh, did total hips. He did a great job with them and he was my, you know, go-to. He was the person I would send all my total hips to, clearly, but then he retired and um, I'm in the greater Toronto area. At that time, we had nobody else that was doing total hips in the area. So uh, a lot of 
FHOs got done because we did not have access to somebody who does total hips. What I'm trying to say is if you're going to send a patient for a total hip replacement, make sure that you have somebody who is not doing their first, second, or third total hip. Make sure you have somebody who uh, has a fair bit of practice with it. We as boarded surgeons, we learn to do these procedures by taking the course and then doing many cases during our residency with mentors, with people that have experience and therefore we develop the experience and, and the sense of how to get the, you know, the angles right and so forth. Um, so it is, it is not the, let me go take a weekend course and do a total hip. Having said that, now you have more information, who should get an FHO, who should get a total hip replacement. I hope you found this helpful. Thank you and have a wonderful day.